Polycat India Limited Q4 FY2020 earning conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gandhav Tongkia. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, operator. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Before I start, let me quickly introduce. My name is Gandhav Tongkia, and I sincerely hope you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. On this call, we shall discuss the Q4 and FY20 results, which were approved in the board meeting held today via video conferencing. We will be referring to the earning presentation, financial results, and financial statements, which are available on the websites of the stock exchanges, as well as investor relation page of our website. It can also be downloaded through the QR code given on slide 12 of our earning presentation. Joining me today from the management team, we have our chairman and managing director, Mr. Indra Jaisinghani, and our director of finance and accounts, Mr. Shamlal Bajaj, on the conference call. Let me now hand it over to our chairman, Indra Bhai, for his comments. Good evening. Everyone, I hope you all are doing well. We achieved healthy underlying performance with improved profitability in FI20. Polycat maintained its dominant position in the wires and cables and continued to expand in the presence in the electrical ecosystem. This year, our mark with a strong business momentum, despite significant headwinds, however, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and service so economic implementations partly tapped growth, tapered growth. We are undertaking all necessary measures to ensure safety and well-being of our employees, partners, and support, dealers and distributors, customers and communities across India. Our financial stability in-house, backward integration, wide distribution channels, and quality human capital position us well to deal with all challenges and succeed. I now request Gandhar to take you through our earning presentations. Gandhar, please wait. Thank you very much, Gandhar Bhai. Moving on to presentation with slide four. In year ended 31st March 2020, our consolidated revenue growth has been healthy at 11% year on year, led by decent performance across segments. EBITDA grew by 19% year on year, and margin at 12.8% improved 87 BIPs year on year versus FY19. Our staff cost at 4.1% of our sales were higher by 38 bips year on year due to adverse leverage and one-time credit in the base year. Advertisement and publicity spend were partly curtailed given the virus outbreak and remained flat at 1.2% of our sales. Our profit before tax grew by 34% year on year driven by decreased finance cost reflecting the lower borrowings compared to previous year. A detailed breakup of our other income and finance costs have been provided on slide 16 of our earning presentation. Our profit after tax at Rs 7.66 billion has been strong, up by over 53% year on year, partly aided by reduction in statutory income tax rate. Moving on to specifics of uh, quarter four on slide five, our revenue from operations at rupees 21.3 billion declined by 14% year on year, reflecting severe impact of COVID-19. Excluding COVID-19 impact, sales could have been higher by approximately rupees 6.1 billion, implying a potential 11% year on year growth in Q4 FY20 based on our estimate. EBITDA excluding other income was rupees 2.9 billion, up 20% year on year in Q4. EBITDA margin at 13.8% was higher on year on year basis, led by better product mix and contribution. However, I would like to re emphasize, as I did in previous quarterly earning calls, 
that the correct way to analyze our operating profitability would be on annualized basis as several dynamics can weigh on quarterly margins. Historically, we have noted that our annualized sustainable margin in wires and cable business typically tends to hover in the range of 11 to 13 percent. Our profit after tax is up by over 53 percent year on year, driven by decreased finance cost, reflecting the lower borrowing compared to previous years and lower income tax expense. Moving on to segment on slide six, wires and cables, which is our largest business, grew by 19, grew by 9% year on year in FY20, despite challenges. Domestic business environment continued to see sluggishness with prevailing weak economic condition coupled with falling commodity prices. Virus outbreak and subsequent lockdown in late March further impacted business as that month is usually the busiest period from sales perspective. Consequently, overall wires and cables industry is estimated to decline by almost 14% FY20 with significant impact on unorganized trade. Higher sales from optical fiber cable and exports, which grew strongly on the back of a large order, offered some momentum. We are also seeing increasing traction in few developed geographies, for example, USA, where our sales in FY20 has increased almost 41 times as against last year. The EBIT margin in this segment was higher by 26 bits year on year due to improved sales mix. The business in fourth quarter was significantly impacted due to virus outbreak in prime sales period. Moving to FMEG on slide seven, FMEG segment contributed almost 9.4% to our business in FY20 versus 8% in FY19. The FMEG's robust momentum was slightly halted by virus outbreak. 6% decline in Q4 tapered annual growth of this business to 30% year on year. Fan, lighting, luminaries continue to grow at healthy pace despite challenging marketing conditions. Led by our distribution strength, in-house manufacturing ability, and improved profitability, improving portfolio mix. Fans posted strong growth in months of Jan and Feb. Margins improved on the back of calibrated pricing actions. Lighting and Lume posted healthy performance with improved profitability led by a refined strategy. If subsidized, uh, if reducing price erosion in B2C lighting products continue, it could further support margins in this business. Growth in switch gears and switches continue to remain muted. Considering the widespread fear and uncertainty around jobs and income, consumer sentiments have dwindled. While the pent up demand is expected to bounce back as movement restrictions ease, some down trading in the near term seems imminent. We believe our strong distribution network, value and quality proposition put us in a sweet spot to gain some from such development. In the coming year, we will continue to build our new product pipeline with focus on technology and energy efficiency. Moving to slide eight, uh, other segment, which is largely our uh, EPC business, which is strategic in nature, nature witness healthy growth in revenue and profitability led by execution of profitable projects. Though we expect margins in this business to remain in high single digit on an analyzed basis, which we believe is sustainable. During the year, Polygam along with its consortium undertook projects under BharatNet phase two projects in the state of Gujarat and Bihar and collected almost 4,700 gram panchayats or villages in a period of almost 10 months. Being an established leader in electrical manufacturing domain, we aim to replicate our project management skills and actively pursue large digital infrastructure projects, including smart cities, surveillance, Bharat Net, and digital village. Slide nine uh, highlights some of the key initiatives we undertook to help society and communities. I've discussed uh, uh, these. We have embedded a video showcasing various hygiene measures we have undertaken at our factories. I would urge you to watch it if you haven't already. Slide 10 and 11, though these are uh, self-explanatory and provide color on business implication of COVID-19, let me just give you thoughts on how Polycab is traversing through such exceptional times and share our assessment of current situation. As you all are aware, COVID-19 
poses a unique challenge and has impacted lives and livelihoods of people amidst these defining moments our priorities have remained the same safety of our employees and partners is foremost foreseeing the risk we deployed our business continuity plan in mid march all office based employees transition to work from home environment with little to no disruption and following the government directive on nationwide lockdown we had completely shut our offices and factories currently all our factories have resumed operation with limited capacity and follow a stringent standard operating protocol we are continuously monitoring the situation and will ramp up production on need basis our local and regional offices warehouses in non containment zones are open we are also in touch with our channel partners to extend support and help them in whatever ways we can furthermore we are generously supporting the community at large as these are the times when they need help the most our company is not just contributing to various government and industry fund we are we are directly helping society by donating ventilators to government hospitals collaborating to set up quarantine facilities and distributing food packages and essentials to hundreds of families every day around our factory locations and offices every polycap employee donated one day of her salary or his salary to pm cares fund we aim to continue to extend our support even after normalization by coordinating and partnering with various ngos on the macro environment the virus outbreak has caused significant economic disruption with heightened level of uncertainty markets were already struggling with tight liquidity conditions weak credit growth and slowing industrial production amongst other waning macro and the pandemic has further aggravated the stress volatile commodity prices was another headwind for our industry during the quarter nevertheless currently we are surely seeing some signs of progress many infrastructure construction as well as real estate projects have resumed activities across the country of planning to do so immediately we started billing in early may and it has been progressing well while it is much below normalized level at the moment opening of markets is definitely helping most of our authorized dealers and distributors and retailers are currently operating however major dealers in metros are still facing issues due to restriction of movement and lockdown while we are working on several projections and scenarios to prepare ourselves in such dynamic environment overall we believe it will take at least one or two quarters before demand puts on a normal footing during this period we also focus on conserving and augmenting our liquidity position through judicious cost management deferring non critical spend final from a financial position standpoint we are quite comfortable we have healthy cash balances and significant amount of unutilized credit lines crisis has given us double a positive long term rating and uh, a one positive short term rating having said that i would like to recall one of the einstein quote which i read recently and that's the opportunity you get when you are working from home and that uh, quote is uh, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity and i believe this quote is more relevant than ever i feel the current one will also put forward plenty of opportunities for small and large businesses across sectors as covid-19 transforms from the orthodox business models work, work from home has become the new norm and is likely to be a win win for companies as well as employees in the longer run this will not just require higher investment in it infrastructure but also increase demand for high speed digital connectivity in non metro and perhaps even in rural areas the ongoing reverse migration may give a push to automation as industries face labor shortages and if the movement sustains we may see alteration in conventional consumption pattern with more clusters of developed rural companies across the world have been fixated to china as a low cost manufacturing base for a long time covid 19 will surely provide a fresh basis for them to reconsider and reorganize their their global manufacturing footprint 
this along with government impetus to indigenous manufacturing and make india self reliant economy will create jobs and spur industrial and infrastructure growth overall we are very optimistic of our nation's robust outlook and long term economic prospects quickly moving on to financials our fundamentals remain on course of improvement rosi return on capital employed for fy20 stood at 26.4% while underlying profitability has improved as reflecting in better operating margins versus last year rosi seems optically lower on year on basis due to ipo proceeds reflected in fy20 adjusting for that current year rosi would have been about 150 bips higher our balance sheet remains healthy with over rupees 1.6 billion of net cash as of march 2020 and debt equity ratio at a mere 0.04x our working capital deteriorated due to inventory pile up in anticipation of generally high demand in march and higher receivable on account of lockdown however we believe it will even out as market conditions improve we will continue to work on our long term strategic and structural initiatives like increasing channel financing inventory rationalization de bottlenecking of processes increasing automation augmenting supply chain operation with technology and building data analytics capabilities in fact this lockdown has granted us some additional time to provide extra thrust to these initiatives i am sure it will help us reinforce our market positioning and thrive in times to come on the distribution side the pillar of our business model remain strong with direct reach of over 3500 authorized dealers and distributors across geographies indirectly serving over 125000 retail outlets as of march 2020 we continue to enhance our key influencer connect through project bandhan which now has over 135000 electricians and over 41000 retailers on board that was broadly on the company performance now i wanted to share a uh, couple of developments which took place after the period closing first uh, i'm sure many of you may be aware of this we bought out uh, riker from trafigura early this month riker as you know uh, was a plant uh, which was initially envisaged and pursued our chairman and senior management team to complete backward integration of our of our all key inputs while the plant was shaping up trafigura had proposed to partner with us and hence a 5050 jb was created to build a state of the art facility which conforms to global production standards with minimal environmental impact however post trafigura's recent global strategic decision to exit from value add manufacturing businesses in india where it is a jb partner their 50% stake was offered to us and we decided to acquire it making raikara wholly owned subsidiary of our company apan call karat australia airtel number the आपला कॉल होल्ड वर ठेवला आहे कृपया द परचेस कंसीडरेशन वाज अराउंड यूएस डॉलर 4 मिलियन और रुपीस 30 करोड एंड द ट्रांजैक्शन हैज नाउ बीन क्लोज्ड रैकर फाइनेंशियल्स विल बी फुल्ली कंसोलिडेटेड इन पीआईएल फ्रॉम दिस करंट क्वार्टर द सेकंड डेवलपमेंट व्हिच इज मोर रिसेंट मिस्टर श्यामलाल बजाज हु इज आवर डायरेक्टर फाइनेंस एंड अकाउंट्स एंड चीफ फाइनेंशियल ऑफिसर हैज टेंडर्ड हिज रेजिग्नेशन फ्रॉम द पोस्ट ऑफ सीएफओ uh with the closure of the business uh, today onwards and uh, board has accepted it uh, mr bajaj will continue to uh, guide us and mentor us uh, as company's executive director this transition was in progress from last uh, a year or two in line with our company's uh, company wide succession planning process to conclude i would like to emphasize that our company brand and fundamentals are well positioned to navigate through such extraordinary times we will continue to operate with a high level of agility and responsiveness government stimulus front loading of various spends structural reforms and regulation will certainly help the broader economy and consumer in the near term and we will work to leverage our strong business model and achieve sustainable profitable growth over medium to long term thank you for all for joining us today Uh, on this note, I hand over the session to the operator, and we will be extremely pleased to take your questions. Good 
So shall we open the floor for question answer? Yes, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just wanted to check with you uh, regarding the uh, value and volume growth for this quarter and full year in the cable business. Uh, if you can share, that will be great. Yeah. So, Ravi, a couple of things which are relevant when we analyze companies in cable and wire industry. One is uh, LME uh, and Forex has a significant bearing. on the top line because most of the large players uh, assume uh, and pass it on to the end customer and there is no risk which is retained so if lme goes down or forex goes down it impacts the top line or bottom line accordingly the second thing is volume is not relevant uh, because you know if i talk about 1 km of aluminum cable and 1 km of copper copper cable though that the unit would be same which is 1 km but the value would be significantly different Having said that, uh, since uh, the LME and Forex has softened up in in the current year in compared to last year. आपने कॉल करने से पहले एक एल नंबर दो। आपने कॉल होल्ड वर ठेव लाही। कृपया लाइन बरस रहा कि वह नंतर। Yeah, so you know what I was saying is this Forex uh, and LME has generally uh, softened up in the current year, which indirectly indicates that uh, uh, there is uh, an upside movement. uh the wire and cable business uh, in the current fiscal has uh, in, has improved almost by 9% mm. your 9% is the revenue growth you are telling or is yes uh, is revenue growth is revenue growth but but uh, volume growth would have been higher uh, i mean uh, though we can't exactly calculate it uh, uh, given the drop in uh, uh, copper prices so at least in q4 it would have been higher Yeah, I think it's best not to compare the volume uh, growth because it could be misleading, and that is where I feel that it's better to go by value. At max, for the purpose of analysis and uh, and evaluation, we may bring in additional factor of forex and LME, which uh, has uh, considerably reduced in comparison to last year in the current year, which indirectly means that uh, the overall top line has has increased significantly beyond what is being visible from the financial statement. Got it, sir. And uh, in terms of uh, share of wires, as a percentage of overall uh, portfolio, so would it have gone up uh, this year compared to last year? And if, if so, roughly how much? Is it? Yeah, uh, it has not significantly undergone a change. Wire business is more or less flattish in the current year. uh but uh, if uh, but another element which is important to consider is the, the denominator would include the export business which is like elephant in the room so if i bring that amount into denominator it would uh, lead to uh, an impression that wire contribution has slightly decreased but if i normalize it it uh, continues to be in the same range thank you we would request mr swaminathan to come back in the queue as we have several participants waiting for their turn Also, we would request the participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bappul from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. First of, uh, Indra Bhai, Mr. Bajaj, Gandhar, and the entire team, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so, sir, the two questions from my end. One is uh, uh, over the period of last three months uh, after the COVID uh, has sort of broken out. uh what are the initiatives on the cost front that we are seeing um what is the change in the thought process there so just wanted to understand that that's question number 1 question number 2 is uh, can you talk a little bit more in terms of uh, working capital especially the the payables and expect, uh, acceptances uh, because as i see in your cash flow statement uh, that is the the delta between 19 and 20 thanks aditya uh you know co covid has given us an opportunity uh, to revisit almost everything and we as a company we are focusing on three or four key elements 
and we started doing that uh, slightly before pa pandemic uh, outbreak in India, but we are continuing with that uh, with uh, greater focus. One is cost optimization, and uh, this is start from zero based costing in a few of our production as well as purchase uh, initiatives. Second is the operational and manufacturing cost, wherein we want to reduce uh, the cost which can be avoided. We have already carried out some evaluation and uh, reduce cost in few of the line items, but uh, we, uh, we still believe that further cost optimization is possible. You know, in a large organization over the period, what happens is at times you start incurring some costs which are not necessarily uh, adding value to your business. And that is why this uh, particular crisis has given us an opportunity to revisit and we will continue to do that and reduce the cost wherever possible. The second is augmentation of cash, though we are supporting our dealers and that is our prime focus. But at the same time, we are managing our cash to ensure that we have enough cash available. You would have already noticed that our gross cash as of March 20 is uh, close to 280 crore rupees or thereabouts. Uh, and you would have also uh, already, you yeah. already know that dividend payout was also done in March. So after that, we are continuing with extra cash. So that's there. In few of the cases, we have been able to get some additional credit from our vendors without any additional cost that we have availed, uh, but which is not necessarily significant. And the last thing, uh, which is the fourth part of the initiative, is uh, giving back to community, which is around CSR. So these are the four activities on which we are spending a lot of time, and that remains our focus area. Uh, the second thing was uh, around the working capital. Uh, uh, yes. There were two items uh, uh, which were always uh, in our focus. Uh, but I think after the IPO, we learned that from all the investors and uh, persons like you. Uh, on inventory, we started our uh, project with one of the management consultants. Uh, the objective was twofold. One is reduce the absolute amount of inventory which we are carrying on our book so that we can reduce the working capital involved. The second is within that reduced amount, increase the number of SQ. So you increase the availability and you reduce the amount. So you get uh, twin benefits. That project is uh, progressing well. We have already achieved a bit of success, though it is not clearly reflected in March 20 numbers because of COVID and higher level of inventory. But uh, that is progressing well, and we are happy with whatever we have achieved so far, and we will continue to further monitor and optimize it. The second part of working capital is our trade receivables. And as you can see in our presentation, the trade receivables are uh, within the uh, overall acceptable numbers. Having said that, we believe that channel financing, which we introduced almost four or five years, would continue to help, and we would be able to further penetrate channel financing, both uh, in cable and wire, where it is hovering around 60-65% to a higher number, and in FMEG, where it is in uh, early double digit to a greater number. Both of these initiatives, one on inventory side, as well as on the trade receivable side, would help us in further improving the uh, working capital. Right, right. Uh, actually, what I was trying to understand was the delta between OCS last year and this year, and uh, that essentially comes from payables and acceptances. So, if you can give me the number of acceptances, uh, that could be helpful. So, acceptances last year was around 803 crore rupees uh, in FY19, and in the current year is 816 crore rupees. There are two important things we should consider when we are analyzing uh, our uh, uh, acceptances and liabilities. Last year, because of Dangote, we had received almost 400 crore rupees as advance in FI19, which we have adjusted against the supplies which we have done in the current system. And uh, between FI18 and FI19, there was one time Z class of the, uh, of the uh, financing arrangement which we have with our vendors, which was sitting in our uh, library, which you can normalize when you are preparing your spreadsheet. Thank you so much, and best of luck for the quarter to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, thanks a lot. And first of all, congratulations on a pretty decent set of numbers. Uh, and congratulations to you, Gandharv, also on appointment as CFO. Um, sir, my question is on uh, first is on the export. Uh, so you uh, you mentioned in the presentation that uh, you booked about 7.5 billion rupees of export in FY20. So two parts. Uh, how much of the Dangote order is left for execution? Uh, for uh, I'm so sorry FY20? to interrupt. Uh, 
So I think either of you all have kept the phone on speaker. If you all can get it off the speaker, please. Yeah, is it okay now? Can yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, sir, on exports two parts. So how much of Dangote order is left for execution? Uh, and beyond the Dangote order, you know, what is the outlook on exports? Could you throw some light on some of the initiatives that you are taking uh, to at least reach the similar level of exports? in FY21 that is one and uh, the guidance for kpex in FY21 uh, i saw that uh, the company has done about 2.8 billion rupees of kpex in FY20 so a uh, rough break up of that number where was it spent etc yeah thanks atul thanks a lot for uh, wishes to the management team and thank you for pushing me uh, uh, i think there are two three elements of your question one is on the exports uh, so Dangote, uh, uh, we have done uh, already probably 750 crore rupees or thereabout of billing in March 20, and around uh, uh, 200 crore rupees or so is uh, required to be built in the current year, and we are progressing well there. Uh, the overall export is close to 1100 crore rupees, uh, and uh, and we have received in addition to Dangote favorable uh, uh, you know support from uh, countries like US. And this has increased significantly. Uh, you would be able to recall all that in one of the earlier quarter presentation, I had mentioned that we are trying to get into a distribution business in few of the geographies, including countries like US. Uh, we have uh, incorporated a trading arm, a new legal entity in the US, and that is progressing well. Globally, there is a almost $38 billion opportunity which is available in export. Uh, because of the COVID pandemic, it looks like that shift from China would help uh, countries uh, like India, and that would, in turn, would uh, be able to uh, offer some support to uh, our industry and large players in this industry. Uh, we are focusing on large geographies and identified uh, set of sectors globally, and uh, uh, recently, whatever we are seeing, it is encouraging. Having said that, I don't think uh, I would be able to give you an assurance at this stage that uh, we would be able to get a similar number of Dangote, uh, but I can certainly assert with uh, with, uh, uh, with utmost confidence that the management team is doing whatever is possible to uh, further improve the export. Uh, and in medium term, uh, we believe that export can be almost 10% or thereabout of our top line. The second element was around capex. Uh, we have invested almost 280 crore rupees. Most of it has uh, been invested in debottlenecking. Uh, some uh, investment for export business because the certifications are uh, different and wherein we need to have different set of uh, uh, machineries. Uh, apart for FMEG, uh, uh, for example, uh, the facilities which are operating at a, a higher capacity retention level and uh, remaining is uh, for regular upkeep. Uh, I am sure a few of the other participants would be interested in knowing what would be the capex outflow for the next year. Considering the uncertainty which we have, uh, I think we would be very careful in spending capex. At this stage, uh, 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 you know, we can assume a number of 200 crore rupees or thereabout, but that will be uh, monitored at a uh, at a regular interval and uh, very closely, and we will spend only when we have enough visibility on the business. Thanks, sir. And sir, very quickly, what was the gross debt number on the balance sheet as of FY20 end? Gross debt number. Uh, gross debt number is uh, around uh, 157 crore rupees in FY20 in comparison to FY19, which was around 272 crore rupees. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And best of all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kuti from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> two questions from my end. So firstly, uh, even the EBITDA margin side, uh, you kind of said that uh, uh, the, the average range, we should particularly look in margins is anywhere about 11 to 13 uh, percent. If you look at it directionally, even in this year, uh, we've been improving our margin profile. Uh, incrementally, uh, if we are First of all, are we assuming the share of buyers to increase in the year FY21? And if in that case, what should be the margin outlook? I think sustainable margin in our business, considering the overall proportion of cable and buyer, 
is anywhere between 11 to 13 percent. Uh, you are right, Prashant, that in the current year, the actual margin is slightly higher. But if I go by the historical trend, it has uh, generally hovered between 11 to 13 percent. And I think for your modeling purposes, it is better to assume those numbers because in such a situation, you will be left with positive surprises, hopefully. Okay, okay. Uh, but in that case, uh, what would have actually aided the margin in this year? If uh, you could probably highlight that because you've seen a significant increase in across margin numbers. So uh, it's because of two, three reasons. Uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, change in the mix has uh, held us in improving our margins. Uh, as I explained a while back, uh, the overall composition of domestic and export, as well as some new products, have uh, changed this base composition. The second thing is, uh, uh, we have taken some pricing actions, as I was talking about for FABG and other businesses. So this is mainly because of change in mix and uh, some pricing actions which we have purposely taken during the course of the year, which has held us in improving the overall market. What was the pricing action taken, sir? If you can probably have in there. Yeah, that was a pricing action to improve the overall realization for a few of the product categories. For example, as I mentioned about FMEG business in the case of fans and in the case of few of the other products in cable and wire. No, I just asked what the quantum, what is the quantum of pricing system? Yeah, I would uh, prefer not to talk about it. It was considered uh, as a sensitive information for the industry. Uh, but suffice to say that it is a combination of both pricing as well as change in mix. Okay. The second question is on the uh, on the on the overall mix in the cables and wires business. Uh, while about 35 to 40 percent of our business is now uh, wires, uh, you do have a proportion which is it serves uh, services to the industry and also to the some part of it maybe the government as well. Uh, how does that uh, take precedence in the year 2021 uh, in the wake of probably CAPEX and all activities being lower? Uh, how does the overall uh, overall thing change for us uh, in, in, in the year 2021? Can just give some sense on that. And that's the point. Yeah, so I actually covered that a bit in, uh, in the opening remarks. I think two things which are important in the current year. One is... Uh, uh, what would be spent by the government and private capex in the current year, uh, and which uh, is dependent on several factors, including the most important factor is uh, whether there is a cure for this particular pandemic. If we get a cure for pandemic today, as well as government starts spending today, the growth would be phenomenal. But if any of these activities happen a quarter or two quarters down the line, it would have impact on uh, on the performance of all the companies in India, including our company. So that's a combination. Uh, we believe between uh, a quarter or two, we should be able to come back to the normal uh, uh, demand level. And from there, I don't think there would be any challenge. Have we already come, I mean, how much percentage in terms of utilization will be at this point of time? As far as let's say, may concern or if it will be new central? Yeah, so in the first 40 days, there was hardly any activity. Uh, though we uh, resumed our operations slowly and gradually after the year end, but because of lockdown and uh, considering the fact that almost all the markets were closed, there was hardly any other uh, significant activity. After that, we have seen a decent traction, particularly in B2C business and demand from uh, uh, rural or tier two or tier three towns. Thank you so much. Thank you. We would request the participants to please limit your question to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, I want to ask uh, in terms of the gross margin uh, uh, possibility uh, and uh, what will be the dividend payout policy for the company? Uh, Pratesh, I missed your first statement. Uh, is it okay. around Riker uh, capacity? Yeah, so uh, so the acquisition that we did, the JV in which we uh, took up our stake to 100%, uh, eventually when the plant becomes operational, uh, what would be the benefit to the gross margins of the company? Yeah, so this plant is already operational. In fact, it got operationalized in the first quarter of uh, 1920. Uh, this is as part of our uh, backward integration. Uh, it is helping us uh, in two ways. One is we are able to ensure that we are getting the quality of the copper, which is uh, required to give the uh, quality of uh, uh, in a qualitative products for which we are known for. So we import copper from the overseas market 
uh, in cathode form and convert the copper in, in, in this particular facility into rods. And uh, from rods, we draw cables and wires. And since it is done uh, fully in our supervision and in our control in our manufacturing locations, we are able to ensure quality. So that is uh, already being done. The acquisition which we have done has given us some additional capacity. Uh, 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 the plant capacity is almost 225,000 tons. And generally speaking, our uh, requirement is uh, around uh, 75,000 to uh, 1 lakh tons. And there's some additional capacity which is available. Having said that, this 225,000 ton capacity can be achieved only over the period because this plant got operationalized only four quarters back. Uh, so we are working to operate, uh, to ensure that we are able to optimally cut it, uh, utilize the plant. The second thing is the arrangement between RICAR and Polycare would be on uh, job work basis and wherein uh, there is no significant impact which is expected on the gross margin of the company. But certainly because of better quality, we would be able to reduce the copper content. It will help us in uh, optimizing the cost of goods sold. The second question I think is on a dividend. Uh, 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 we have a stated dividend policy which considers uh, the internal and external factors. Uh, you would be able to recollect in FY19, we had uh, 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 distributed almost 10% of our profit. And in this year, we have already done an interim dividend payout in March, uh, and which is slightly more than the last year. We will continue uh, to pay dividend after considering uh, the cash uh, which is available with us the business performance of the period and the cash which is anticipated to be reserved, to be kept with the company for future needs. Okay, Mr. You said 10% payout you have done in 19 and 10% payout you have done in FY20. So as of now... It, it's, it's slightly higher than FY20. Uh, uh, the EPS is around 50 rupees and uh, the dividend which we paid was 7 rupees. If I include the dividend distribution tax, uh, it is uh, around 13-14%. Uh, but you do not have a policy for, say, a formulated policy that, you know, I will pay out 25% minimum. You do not have that type of a policy, right? We have a formulated policy uh, wherein the decision making is left to the board of directors, which provides for qualitative uh, factors which are required to be considered. We don't have a policy wherein we have a quantitative, oh. quantitative uh, metrics uh, saying that 25% or 20% is required to be paid out. But we certainly have a policy where we have a qualitative factors which are required to be considered. And on that basis, board of directors recommend dividends for approval to the shareholders. Perfect. Thank you very much. Eh? All the best. Eh? Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonali Sarigankar from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding resumption. So of our overall sales, how much percentage is accounted by urban or tier one cities? And in the opening remarks, you mentioned that some of our shops have opened in the orange and the green zones. So currently, what kind of utilization or demand of take are they currently working at? Yeah, so certainly that's an interesting one. And we were also internally discussing, deliberating what is the best way to define, you know, urban and rural. Uh, and we are still trying to get to a definition which is acceptable. Uh, internally, uh, we have analyzed uh, and we feel that uh, uh, our rural penetration is not necessarily very significant. And the recent uh, few weeks, we have uh, seen uh, an uptick in demand from the rural economy. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, most of dealers and distributors in non-containment uh, zones are uh, uh, are operational, but uh, the the key cities where, from where we get uh, our sales are still in lockdown. For example, a city like Bombay or Thane, and uh, that is where, uh, though the quantity or the quantum of outlets operational are significant, uh, there is a still challenge in the overall utilization in terms of throughput. Got it, Got sir. It, sir. So, so, and my second question is regarding the supply side. Uh, so, you mentioned that, you know, many of your factories have resumed operations. So, currently, what uh, percentage of utilization are you uh, operational at? And secondly, what is the kind of inventory uh, that we have in the channels, considering that the first 40 days of the lockdown uh, had almost zero demand? That's it from my side. Yeah. So inventory in channel has now, as of now while we are talking, has reduced significantly. There was certainly, certainly in certain pockets, uh, slightly higher inventory 
because they had some inventory uh, in anticipation of higher sales in the month of March, but that has been liquidated to a great extent already, and there is no significant inventory, generally speaking, available in the channel. Uh, that was the one thing. Sorry, I missed the second part of it, Sonali. What was the second part? So your supply, uh, in your current factories, what percentage of utilization are you currently operational at? Yeah, it's uh, fairly low at this stage because, you know, there is no point getting into uh, uh, production where we don't have enough demand. And as you could imagine, uh, that uh, the large cities in India are still in lockdown and that has bearing on the overall sales. Uh, but uh, we are totally ready in case if there is a demand uh, to supply. And, you know, this government restriction on uh, social distancing has also slightly impacted in few of our factories the overall uh, utilization because we can have only few identified number of employees in a particular shift. But uh, we are, uh, uh, if there is a, an increase in demand, uh, we are already geared up to meet that demand. And you do not foresee problems with the migrant supply uh, labor issue? No, no. In the coming no. quarters? No, we don't anticipate any significant challenge. Uh, as you already know, Sonali, we have presence in Gujarat as well as in Daman, and where uh, we are not witnessing any significant uh, uh, migration of the laborer. So that is not a challenge. And, you know, on the raw material side, we any which ways have a very healthy supply chain, and we are not witnessing any challenges from raw material. So labor and raw material is not uh, a significant challenge for us. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sonali, for your question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval State from NK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, on, you emphasized uh, on automation. So if you can give some numbers on what can be the capex to be spent on, on automation and probably what can be the leverage on, on the margins uh, from that going forward or you know whenever it is fully implemented. Yeah. So, uh, Neville, uh, you know, uh, across the globe, automation is a key, artificial in uh, intelligence, automation, uh, and technology. And uh, we would like to replicate something similar in our factories. We were probably the first one to start with automation, and we implemented robotic arms for managing our warehouse in uh, Halol. And if I'm not wrong, we were the first one in the industry, though the automobile industry was using it. In our industry, we were the first mover in that direction. Uh, the automation which I've talked about uh, is being worked on as of now by this uh, management team of the company. And probably in quarters to come, I would be able to give you additional details. Like any other automation, it is going to certainly help us in improving the quality of our products, as well as would help us in reducing the cost and involvement of manual labor. So is it fair to assume large part of cost reduction would be on employees? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, second question is on, uh, uh, you know, channel inventory, what you mentioned that it has, uh, you know, come down significantly. So uh, what outlook, as you stated, that demand will normalize in one to two quarters, but uh, when would your primary sales uh, start, uh, you know, to the, to the channel as inventory has started to, uh, you know, uh, reduce meaningfully now? It has already started. Primary sale has already started while we are talking. The only thing is, it's not necessarily meeting your or my expectation, but that's a reality of the environment today, where almost all the companies, uh, which certainly not, uh, not uh, which are not in essential sector, are uh, probably uh, underutilized. Okay, and lastly, any outlook, if not, uh, you know, a guidance on Polycap, but any sense on what kind of revenue decline industry can see? Uh, because demand is going to normalize in H2 only. So FY21, what kind of uh, you know revenue decline we can see in cable and wires uh, for the industry? I think uh, will, we'll have to wait for two things to happen. One is we'll have to wait for lockdown. Uh, you know, we are still in the lockdown 4.0 and we don't know what would happen on 1st of June. Uh, so we'll have to probably wait for a quarter to come up with a point of view. But certainly first half would be impacted. Uh, and all the companies are trying their level best to reduce the impact, and we are no exception to that rule, and we are also trying to do that. Okay. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you very much for your question, uh, as well as for your uh, wishes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Kothari from Assassinus. Please go ahead. Congratulations for a good set of numbers in an otherwise uh, little bit challenging environment. 
Uh, my first question is uh, on your distribution strategy in the global markets. Uh, if you can little bit elaborate on that, and uh, you know whether therefore you will be also making the new round of capex as and when your distribution uh, strategy comes in force. Um, second question is with reference to you know the B two B versus B two C. Uh, do you think probably for next few quarters you might see a uh, little bit stronger you know b2c versus b2b because there might be you know delay in project completion or you know some delay in the you know handover uh, you know from the developers to the actual users and therefore that may result into the further delay uh, you know in the ramp up yeah thank you so on the first part of your question on the distribution in the export market uh, there is no significant amount of capex which is anticipated because all these companies which are being uh, uh incorporated would continue to act like trading arm and would not require any capex uh the second part uh, is uh, around uh, uh so before i get into the second part let me give you a broader perspective you know uh, the projects do be are seeing are getting delayed but there is another important element which is already present uh, in the minds of uh, large uh, construction contractors infra project developers that they would like to recover or make good of this loss which they have already incurred in terms of time lost by of almost 3 uh, to 4 months and they would like to immediately uh, start the projects and there would be a bit of a pent up demand and uh, you know all the large projects which were announced in last year or were anticipated uh, uh, are likely to get into execution this year there would be some loss but not necessarily uh, everything will be shared as of now i am not aware of any of the large projects getting shelved it's quite possible that they have not taken decision in terms of timelines but none of these have been shelved and in the case of large projects almost 1 to 2% of their construction cost or the total project cost is generally for cable and wire and we have visibility on few of these sectors and the projects which are going to help so it's not necessarily that only b2c is going to give us support i still believe that b2b institutional and direct sales would continue to help uh, our company having said that uh, b2c through digital go to market strategy as well as in tier 2 rural would have some uh, level of higher level of support and which is what we are trying to leverage these are challenging as well as developing time and we feel that will probably slightly change the overall mix of uh, the composition of our sales but we'll have to probably wait for a quarter or two before we conclude our thoughts on that thank you we would request the participants to please submit your question to one per participant the next question is from the line of adesh mehta from mozilla loswal asset management please go ahead um hello sir hello am i audible yes sir you are audible you can go ahead please so uh, uh so i understand that copper prices would have uh, you know corrected uh, significantly this quarter so what could be the inventory loss uh, we have booked uh, uh, in our pnl this quarter yeah so that's an interesting one uh, you know uh, globally when metal is procured for example copper or aluminium it comes with embedded derivative Uh, which provides uh, an opportunity for uh, to the buyer to fix the price at a later date which is subsequent to the procurement date and because of which uh, we don't carry any uh, risk of inventory so whatever movement in lme has happened has not impacted the company generally speaking from the business model point of view the for, uh, the movement in lme as well as forex is a pass through uh, which is generally passed uh, to the end customer on a monthly basis right but sir i'm just trying to understand that uh, uh, if if you have this uh, you know offsetting contracts in terms of derivatives uh, how can you uh, i see that your unitary costs have also come down in terms of uh, you know the materials you have consumed Uh, i've seen a significant uh, reduction in your uh, cost as well so what can it well, i'm just trying to connect this two dot so it is if you see our quarterly pnl uh, uh, as well as the year pnl let's talk about the year pnl first 
the cost of goods sold uh, looks like that it has reduced a bit but you know uh, an element of subcontracting cost which used to sit in fi19 in cost of goods sold is actually sitting in subcontracting cost now uh, because earlier the riker facility was not available with us and we used to uh, procure copper rods from the end customer or from the end vendor and that is why the procurement cost was slightly higher whereas now since we have our own manufacturing facility the subcontracting cost or the cost which is paid to riker is sitting in our other operating expenses so if you normalize with that it is not a significant difference between fy19 and fy20 Okay, so, so uh, uh, is it a fair to understand that the gross margin expansion we have seen could be the result of you know reclassification of this? One element is that is classification. Second is what I explained uh, in uh, in uh, response to an earlier question is because of improvement in sales uh, price realization. We have launched uh, a few new products where we have been able to realize a higher price, and uh, you would have noticed that the sales mix. in terms of export and domestic as well as uh, new products like optical fiber cable has also changed the overall mix of sales in the current year and that has also helped us in improving the sales uh, realization thereby improving the contribution margin oh, got it sir and sir uh, what could be the impairment on receivables we have booked for the full year uh, uh, this year so the expected credit loss method which is required under ndas uh that has been followed the carrying provision is around 157 crore rupees and uh, the pnl debit uh, would be uh, around uh, i'll have to check that number uh, just give me a minute uh, but the closing balance is around uh, uh, 157 crore rupees of provision and provision during the year would be around uh, roughly speaking a rounded of around uh, 10 12 crore rupees Thank you. Adish, you would request to come back in the queue as we have several participants waiting for their turn. The next question is from the line of Anand Lal from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My question ties with the previous participants. So, uh, after this change of uh, approach, uh, whereby the cost gets shifted to other expenses and hence gross margin looks better. is it fair to assume that going forward the gross margin would be in the vicinity of 60 to 68% and it won't cross 70% from here on no i think uh, i mentioned that in my opening remark in our company the ebitda margin and co- contribution margin are best to be reviewed and analyzed on analyzed basis and that is why i would urge you to analyze on uh, on 12 monthly basis and not take a particular quarter as a base and uh, just trying to understand if the business were to resume normalcy uh, post june that is of last three quarters how do you see the volume of take year on year assuming normalcy begins for the last three quarters and the first quarter is a wash off difficult to comment uh, because of too many uncertainties and most of them are beyond the control of the company it's difficult to give you any uh, quantified number at this stage Thank you. We would request the participants to please limit your questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equitas CMS. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, hello sir. Just one question. Uh, if we look at last uh, two years, uh, we have uh, in our cash flow it shows that we have written a return of roughly seventy five crore uh, of receivable uh, from our. channel partners uh, post this lockdown uh, do you see any significant jump in this number going forward as in a one time hit that you may face because of this yeah so let me just clarify uh, what you are referring to write off is actually not write off it's a provision and that is a provision which is required to be created under nda on the basis of by and large uh, historical trend and our company over the period has been able to improve the penetration of channel financing but that has been done over the period so the correct way of look at, uh, looking at it is what is the actual write off and if you would notice in the financial statements which are available on the balance sheet on the website of the company as well as the msc the write off is legal for king crore okay okay but do you see any trend change in that this year because 
a lot of your distributors were locked down for two months um, and they would face a lot of credit crunch. Do you see any significant deviation from that this year? I don't expect uh, that to happen considering whatever we know. Most of our dealers and distributors are with us since last uh, uh, 30, 40, 50 years. And these are uh, uh, parties with uh, significant good financial track record. And we don't expect any challenge. And the second thing, which is very important, I would like to highlight it at the cost of duplication, that almost 65 to 70 percent of our sales is rooted to channel financing, where we have no risk. And these, uh, uh, and the same number in FMEG is almost 15, 20 percent. And uh, this is important when we're analyzing the health and the quality and of the trade distributors. Sure, sir. Uh, thanks a lot and best of luck. Thank you very much for your question as well as for your wishes. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Chindan State from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Zandar, uh, and congrats for the uh, appointment as CFO. Uh, one one thing I am just looking at the quarterly uh, or other expenses. It has jumped uh, quite a bit from 160 odd crore quarterly run rate to 195 crore. Uh, any any one of or any extra spend we have done, and how do we need to look at it? That, that uh, that's the one first question. Uh, second is on the export side. Uh, uh, if you can uh, break it up the wire cable revenue, I think. Uh, uh, we have booked around 180, 190 crore this quarter. Uh, if that is correct, then uh, we have seen uh, uh, domestic revenue de uh, declining around uh, close to 20 percent. So, um, just just to clarify on that export figure. Yeah. So there is no one-off in the other expenses except one particular element of unrealized foreign exchange gain and loss, and the details are available in the financial statement which have been uploaded on the website. When we are comparing mm -hmm. the uh, top line movement, I think there are two, three elements which are required to be considered. One is what is the movement in uh, average LME in Forex in FY1819 vis a vis FY1920. And there is a reduction mm -hmm. uh, in weighted average between the two. And that is Correct. where, uh, you know, the overall sales number has improved. Uh, that is one. The second thing is, uh, though, the, though exports have supported us in the current year, but uh, there was a bit of softening in uh, in few of the markets for cable as well as uh, wire. Uh, if I talk about institutional sales in Western market, uh, it hmm. was slightly soft in the current year because of a couple of reasons. One was the base year was significantly better because of few hmm. large projects. And second is there was a bit of softness uh, in uh, West. Having said that, in all the other regions, we have been able to improve our uh, top line growth. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, IMA, which is uh, the body uh, for the manufacturing association in this particular industry, has right. computed a degrowth of 14% in the current year. Okay. Uh, and, okay. the, and the assumption is uh, that the organized sector has probably degrowed by high single digits, but the unorganized sector has significantly degrowed. Uh, probably mm -hmm. in high double digit. And considering that, the overall performance of the company uh, after excluding export also is positive. Okay. On the other side, any projects, uh, uh, the order book is left uh, to be executed in the coming year or we, we will see some moderation because uh, uh, the execution has uh, has been quite strong uh, in FA20. Uh, is that in relation to cable and wire or for EPC? So in uh, EPC business, yes. Yeah, EPC, we continue to have the healthy uh, order book, but uh, as I mentioned uh, in earlier calls, EPC business for us is a strategic business, and we are very choosy in terms of execution of such uh, 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 such contracts. Uh, on normalized basis, we expect this to be in the range of around 5 to 6 percent of our top line. Uh, only exception could be optical fiber cable business if we get some profitable, uh, uh, you know, contract for that. But otherwise, generally speaking, the annualized number should be around five to six percent of our overall top line. Thank you, Chintan. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you uh, all for joining us today. Uh, thank you for your time as well as interesting questions and perspectives. Um, we sincerely hope that you all remain healthy and safe um, in the coming time. And uh, with that note, uh, uh, we take your leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Polycab India, that concludes this conference.
thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect time playback is complete <laughs>